Hello and welcome back to the Dino Dungeon Devlog. I'm Nino, it says so on my hoodie, and today, well, you've had your flowery devlogs, you've had your juicy jumping, your free demo, your couch co-op, and now we've got to do a devlog about finding broken stuff and fixing it. That's game dev, hashtag game dev. Some viewers may have noticed that the box jitters when the dino is moving it. Forever Limbo noticed this and not only did he comment on the video, he screenshot his comment and put it in my Discord server and then proceeded to tell me again to fix it in his own Discord server. So here I am setting interpolate to interpolate and now the box moves buttery smooth. Dino Dungeon started life in Unity 2017 and as I've upgraded the version of Unity, some problems have emerged. One of which is the scene loading stops the game dead in its tracks and this is super annoying and it only happens in the editor it doesn't happen in the built game but still debugging is a bitch with this you may think why don't you just have a look at the profiler and the reason that i can't do that is the profiler freezes as well when i hit the door and it needs to load the scene Shout out to Walter H, who is a mod in Sam Yam server, who told me that in Unity 2020, the profiler is actually a completely separate operation, so it won't freeze. However, Unity 2020 just fixes the problem altogether. There's just something about Unity 2018 and 2019 that the scene loading for my game, my project, is a bit f***ed. However, Unity 2020, it's near instant. So somehow, upgrading the version of Unity fixed a problem. I'm surprised too. In the last devlog I implemented an early jump which detects the ground a little sooner but now I have this problem that is detecting the ground through the spikes. The respawn system is supposed to be forgiving respawning you the last time you touch the ground but here you're on spikes. I'm going to do separate ground detection for the respawn system. It's an on-trigger exit with the ground so wherever you last left the ground is where you will be respawned. I have to say, even though this was quick and easy, it actually worked quite well. You may remember, to make this game co-op, I had to separate the input from the characters. These input objects live from scene to scene, so they don't get destroyed on scene load. However, what this means is, if you exit the game and then try and join again, the game thinks that you're already there and won't spawn your little menu. But player two, can join the join screen. So here we see player two is joined and player one is nowhere in sight. To fix this, when we come back to the main menu, let's just destroy those input objects and then make them again when you want to join. Let's join two players in. Here are my two players. Two players means two of these input objects here and I need to destroy them when I get back to the menu. Let's hit main menu and my script that I wrote destroys those objects. And we can make them again at the join screen. This next one's not broken, it's just really a change that I want to make. So if you're playing solo, do you need to be told that you're P1, player 1? The arrow is necessary because you need to cycle through the dinosaurs. The labels are necessary if you have two or three players, so you know whose is who. But I'd argue that the labels are not necessary when you have four players, because you can't cycle through the dinos, because all the dinos are taken. I'd say that the arrows don't even need to be there when you have four players. So I wrote some code and now if you're playing solo and you're the only player it will show the arrow but not the labels. And if you have two or three players it will show both the arrows and the labels. And if you have four players there are no arrows or labels since you cannot cycle through dinos and you remain as the same one. A lot of the time I'm going to be fixing stuff and that's the truth. Finding things, demonstrating how it is kind of broken, and coming up with a decent solution. I think a lot of people are going to find value in that. It's not always gameplay programming, like jump arcs, making things squishy and jumpy. It's not always stuff like that. Sometimes it's just hard stuff. Sometimes it's just getting through the broken stuff and making it work. I'm Nino. Shout out to my patrons. If you like this video, hit that bell button so when I make something at my end you receive it on the bell end.